Good morning. Good tag. Hello, Falava. This is Dr. Snow Brown speaking to you all, especially my Snow King Club congregation or the ACC1, ACC2, my Chiefs of Life Today's World Program. All right, today is just a special announcement being the first of, or well, Happy New Moon or Happy New uh, Month, being the first of September. That's correct. Um, today is just an announcement this morning. Hmm. I know that throughout my ministry, almost in the last three or four years, which is, <laughs> I've been talking about this restraining order. That's correct. I have been talking. I have repeatedly uh, been, you know, repetitively been telling my, been telling you all. That's correct. Um, like, um, you know, it's a never, it, it never ending, never ending. That's correct. Uh, sort of song that I sing to you all almost every time. That's correct. I catch up. Oh, I give you a feedback that I'm going to file this restraining order. Well, I think I finally, I finally made a decision. Well, let's hope so, a conscious decision, but more so, well, it, it has to be the right decision. It is the right decision to file this so-called restraining order now. Hmm. Hopefully by the end, either the 29th of September or, or even October, beginning of October hmm, is, is my hope. So that is the new, uh, the good news, the good news that I, I wanted to share with you all this morning, this grace. As you can see already, what's happening inside my kingdom, it's that it, it's, 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 it's pruning, it's pruning itself. It's regrafting itself. That's great. Um, that by the 28th of September, it's going to be something, you know, on, on my, right on my birthday, 50th birthday, that is going to, you know, be something significant but magnificent as well but something that is just right just right for that occasion hmm. so there's been a lot of quick pruning over, overnight there has been pruning there has been uh, a reshuffling um, a, a re recycling a recycling going on inside my church tv ckc tv facebook so you can all see that now but as i said mention now for all those that have been waiting to hear when are you going to file the restraining order well, the, the people that I'm going, my enemies that I'm going up against, that's correct, is the president of the Apart Mongol Mob Association and with their associate, the Ku Klux Klan. Now, of course, I know it's, it's ridiculous at this age. I'm 49 going on 50. I'm about two or three weeks away from my 50th birthday. But for me to have to, you know, to go to court and deal with this, so-called big demon hmm. it's like a, the, the biggest goliath the biggest goliath i have ever had to you know to battle that's great so i want to let you all know those people that i served trespass notices whether it be via registered post that's correct or placing them in your mailbox or taping them on your doors that's great or even personally coming handing it to you in person I want you all to let you know that your names are going to be on the restraining order. So there's 18 of you that I serve trespass notice, but there is a police officer that I refer to as Mr. Shadow, Mr. Shadow, the bad cop, whose um, details I have to obtain to bring him to court to put him on the order as well. Um, and of course, my next door neighbor. Well, he is one of the 18th, of course. That's correct. So all of you will have to come to court to give an explanation, to provide an explanation. And the explanation is, would be, how come you became part of that organization in terms of, you know, your contribution, you know, to my harm, you know, to my torture? That's great. Subjection to torturers and cruelties, arbitrary dictatorships, harms, that's correct. This treaty partnership, I'm sorry, but, but I'm picking, I picked up this morning and even overnight, that the white nigger, and I'm talking about the Pakia in this country, actually pays these criminals money. That's correct. The control, the control to delay things and even to deny our privileges. I don't know what you call this, uh, New Zealand. That's correct. But that sounds very dodgy and corrupt. And it's also anarchy and tyranny, but it also amounts to terrorism. It's a form of terrorism. That's correct. So 
And it being said, a lot of podcasts in this country are very privileged when it comes to the treaty partnership. They have some sort of, I don't know, like a secret friendship or a secret agreement going on. That's correct. Where the podcasts are more privileged, they're the ones that, you know, have the upper hand and uh, make decisions and delegate decisions to the, you know, to the indigenous people, to the Maoris in this country. And the Maoris go and uh, they comply, they comply and apply their so-called decision makings and their so-called agreements. That's great. In other words, if a Maori does what a Pakia tells him to do in this country in exchange for money or some sort of favor or some sort of reward, that's exactly what the treaty partnership is, is really built on and is founded on. And that's what I'm talking about, that the government of New Zealand is founded on, I'm afraid, tyranny, anarchy, terrorism, arbitrary dictatorships. That's correct. And also it's a form of apartheid treaty partnership. That's correct. Where there's only two individuals that are actually going to benefit from this, this, this arrangement. That is the Pakyas and the Maoris. Now, I know I'm a Pakya. I know I'm a Pakya. But it's so disgusting for me to have to come to court to deal with the burden. That's great. Um, you, well, at least I'll have a good look at what the president looks like because I've never spoken to the president of the Upper Heart Mongol Mob Association, nor the president of the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK in this country. I've never actually, yeah. So I guess in this, uh, this, this is going to be a great opportunity for me hmm, to have a good gawk. Oh, wow. Let's, let's have a look. Well, oh my God, so that's what they look like. Your shadows, that's correct. The, the so-called heinous stalkers and, um, you know, harassers, that's correct. And bullies, but, but your shadows, that's been your tailing, you know, actual tail for the last 25 years, but especially in the last eight and a half years at this address. I do not like the fact that, you know, Sergeant Candy of the local upper police station is going to have to come and give her an explanation. Everybody is going to have to come to court and explain themselves as to who gave you the authority, let alone, that's correct, the idea that you could all conspire as a group and go behind my back. This includes my cousin and her so-called evil daddy. That's great. Afatia Baker. I mean, they've got more connection to this uh, criminal, the, the red, you know, this about uh, Mongol Mob Association because, well, he had bro three brothers and, and a nephew. Now, of course, how did I get that information? Well, it came straight from the horse's mouth, my cousins. That's great. But I mean, it was only because in connection to, because they had visited me here. I invited them at one time uh, and she came here with her partner or husband. Yeah, Busby, Trevoranus. That's great. And of course, we had a, you know, a brief talk and she, she mentioned that. But then when I went to serve her first dress pass notice, you know, she reiterated, she reminded me about those. And I said, well, what happened to your so-called relations? And they said, well, they were all dead. Oh, really? That's right. Well, that's what she said. Hmm. But I mean, I really don't care. I really have never had anything to do with any members of this criminal organization, apart from the fact that they seem to have been stalking me in the background, you know, all these years, uh, taking advantage, taking advantage. So wherever I moved to or whatever I was doing, you know, minding my own business, they were taking full advantage. They were busy bodies. I don't know, busy doing something in the background. That's correct. So I, I'm a victim of all, yeah, I'm definitely a victim. See, well, of course, you know, that organization and their white so-called associates have got, I was saying to my Archangel Warren this morning, you know, in a sort of funny way, well, at least they've got, you know, uh, what do you call it? They're qualified, actually. They've got the heavyweight champion. They've got the heavyweight. They hold the heavyweight uh, belt of the champion, being champions of, um, you know, court appearances over the years. I mean, they, yeah, that's right. Hmm. They, they they probably live in the, they live in the courts. That's great. In fact, they've appeared in the courts. Well, they know. They know all the judges and the lawyers and so forth. So, I mean, they're, they're going to have a lawyer. Hmm. It's a good thing that the government of New Zealand actually, you know, they're just lucky that they were born in New Zealand and that the treaty actually accepts their so-called, you know, their people's so-called criminal harmful protocols. But I won't have any of it inside my so-called, you know, CKCTV or inside my kingdom. 
It's a private kingdom, private monarch. That's correct. I won't have any criminals either. When I do my nightings, it won't happen in this country. Thank goodness. I will be leaving your country. So my aim is to file this restraining order, deal with my enemies as best I can, get them off my back, out of my hair, out of my personal space, and also to stop all this arbitrary dictatorships and the stalking and the harassing and the hacking into my digital devices and also trying to use my, I don't know, what they're probably using your internet for free here. Well, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, something, that's great. I mean, it looks like they also stole a copy of your play back in 2006. Yeah, and, and apparently the police, the, the, the police, I don't know, the, the elites in this country have a lot of power. Hmm. Like the diplomats, when they go overseas, they got immunity, you know, to, 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 to commit crimes, to commit crimes. Hmm. And then, of course, they get some sort of, you know, a, an automatic pardon of some sort, or like immunity. So I guess this is what the elites are actually doing as well. When they are using the criminals in this, inside this building, and criminals in these criminal organizations in this country to commit crimes, and also to gather personal information to get as much and collect as much information, say, if they have an interest, uh, uh, you know, regarding a particular citizen. And in this case, well, of course, it's you. The elites have got an interest, all right? Mr. Willis, certainly, yeah, um, they, they certainly do. I mean, I get a lot of, you know, uh, Facebook, you know, since, but of course, I just uh, click, you know, hide, I hide them. Well, they've committed treasons, aren't you, man? And part of the stepping stone to the treasons, of course, is this restraining order. That's correct. Can you imagine now? Hmm. And there's about 30 or 50 of them I have to deal with. They're over on that side and I'm over on the right side. That's correct. That is correct. Well, of course, I will be on my own. Of course, I will be representing myself in dealing with my restraining order. And, and I have my invisible party here. Oh, I'm coming to court to deal with my own issues because it's something. Hey, I send all my PDFs to the Minister of Justice by the name of Right Honourable Chris Fafoy. I try to send them to so-called the Minister of, for Courts, which was Alpito, of course. And what happened? Well, he couldn't deal with it because, well, he, he somehow, um, you know, couldn't receive my, my PDFs. But definitely Minister of Justice. I got a reply back, but it was like an automatic kind of email thing. And that was that, and that was that. That's correct. So I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, well, I never really heard anything after that. And I don't know if the Minister of Justice actually intervened. I don't think so, because the, the stalkings and the unlawful entry still continue. And even when I serve the trespass notices, I don't know what I'm going to do next. So the restraining order is about the only thing that I can do to help myself. I mean, the police, Sergeant Candy will have to come to court to explain herself why she couldn't serve my trespass notices. That's great. Because then I ended up, you know, breaching, breaching, getting a willful trespass charge enter under my so-called criminal record. That's correct. That I'm now having to, uh, to deal with, with an application under... Oh, uh, section 106 of the Sentencing Act, discharge without conviction on the 22nd of September. Thankfully, I am very grateful for that opportunity. Thank you so much uh, to his honor, the presiding judge, uh, for that. That's great because I really deserve it. And of course, after the restraining order, I am hoping to file an application of asylum to leave your country, to leave your country. I don't want, um, I'm not likely to knight anybody from this country. Truthfully, truthfully, I mean, what do you expect? You guys actually tortured the hell out of me. Do you know that my grandparents, my dad's grandparents, man, they cherish me and they, yeah, they, they didn't spoil me, but they never really, you know, they never, they never ever assaulted me or ever harmed me in any way or touched me inappropriately. That's correct. But when I came to this address, this is what happened. This is what happened among these criminals and they're absolute strangers. I got nothing to do with these people. How dare they actually drug you and poison you, you know, like harm you physically and psychologically as well. While well, the stalking and the harassing and the so-called terrorizing on your digital devices, that's great. Like, grieve the Holy Spirit, I was calling you screaming and yelling, that's great. Also greet my two angels. Now that's not on New Zealand, that's correct. These people are absolute strangers. 
The only person that should be harming you on that level is your husband or somebody very close in your family. But these people are absolutely strangers. I don't even know them. That's great. But look how they invaded your, your so-called personal spaces and your digital devices. They don't own any of my stuff. They never buy anything, never, never contributed anything. I mean, they're gangsters and mobsters. They're not likely to be respectful either. I mean, all I did was, you know, uh, try the best not to stick my neck out, but also try to respect their boundaries, which I, uh, you know, of course did. I never entered any of their, their, their flats inside this building. I never stole anything from any of them, but they did a lot of that from me. That's correct. See what I'm talking about, New Zealand? You know, when you have your grandparents, I mean, my mom's grandparents never, never smacked. I don't remember ever being smacked by them or ever being harmed psychologically. I mean, there might've been the odd yelling and the screaming of, you know, being, you know, being, being scolded. But I was never ever harmed by my grandparents, both, both sides. My, both sides of my parents, that's great. And I'm, I'm sure that a lot of you have never been assaulted either by your husbands or your spouses and even your family members as your parents or anybody in your family and your grandparents. Why? Well, because they cherish people. People, man, people that, that, that love you don't torture you. That's great. And are not cruel to you. But all I've been getting was just tortures and cruelties. Mm. Like one on top of another. And it didn't end there. It didn't stop there. That's great. And they just came to pile, they just kept piling on the harms after another, psychological abuse after another. Now I'm going to come to the courts to deal with it. New Zealand, what are you going to say? If, if say for example that a, a thousand Nazi soldiers did storm in and you know and overruled your government, which yeah, yeah, they should, yeah, which they got a right to, and then apply my rights, and then apply and accept my rights as a noble mm, to take over your country and to teach you all a lesson, which the Germans have got right. They've got every right to do so. That's correct. Now, of course, like I said, I send all my PDFs onto Chancellor. Olaf Scholz. That's great. Now, I haven't heard anything, but I hope that they will be able to help to intervene in the situation that's been going on here. That's great. Especially with two criminal organizations that I got nothing to do. They just seem to steal my stuff. That's great. Anything that I produce, they steal, and then they go and apply and empower their people. That's great. But that's not on uh, Maoris. No, that's not on either, Pankhouse. You guys who are in the, the treaty partnership, that's great in this country and you couldn't deport me back to my country because I haven't committed any crimes against any of you. The only crime that I've committed was, was speaking the truth. That's great. And being honest and letting out steam, of course, you know, and preaching the way that I should, because well, uh, uh, there's nobody here on my side. There's nobody protecting and upholding my common law rights. That's great. But you guys think it's, you know, Hey, you guys must be the cruelest, but you must be demons as well. And I couldn't give a stuff about your treaty because I'm leaving a fucking country. Then that's that. Then that's that. I don't owe your people nothing. I'm not a Maori. I'm a German noble. That's great. Who's meek? I don't know why you people didn't respect me. I mean, I certainly respected your people. Mind my own business. I did my own intellect. I created my own intellect. I created it with the help of my angels. That's great. And the help of my God. But what did you people do? You just took advantage. Like you always do. You expect other people to promote your culture and your language. No, don't you dare do that. Not without payment and not without recognition and not without respect either. You guys you ought to learn. That's great. It's a two-way thing, not a one-way thing. But if you're expecting me to bow down and submit and kiss up to your asses and respect people that are torturing, nobody wants to respect anybody who tortures, tortures them and has harmed them in some form or another and has damaged their so-called properties. Nobody wants to respect somebody. The only thing you want to do to somebody like that is either assault them, kill them. That's correct. And I'm, I'm going to say that if Jacinda Ardern, that's correct. Partner, if, if an absolute intruder, like a gangster, like this next door neighbor, came barging into his, his, his address and Jacinda Ardern was asleep and he was in the lounge, 
What do you think he's going to do? Call the police? No, he's not. He's going to grab the, car, the gun or some hard thing to, to yes, right, to assault him. Or to put him down, to, 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 to stop him from going to the bedroom. That's correct. That's exactly how I feel <clears throat> with all the security installing the, the you know, the 24 hour monitored alarm system, the so-called my combination lock. Man, that cost me $200. And you guys actually figured out the company, the son of a bitch next door actually figured out, was given, that's right, and was encouraged as well to obtain the combination, to work it out, to get in, that's correct. <clears throat> and it seems like every time I changed the lock, six times on month, they were given a key to get in. My God, who, well, who does that? Who gives that kind of opportunity, that, that kind of, you know, a privilege? It's not even a privilege, it's a crime. That's correct, New Zealand, this is not on. <clears throat> I don't give a damn about Tony Shaw because he doesn't own any of my stuff that I produced, you know, out of my own effort and my own intelligence. He doesn't own nothing. I've never spoken to him in person, that's great. So you people, this is not on. So you better take back, take back all those decisions that you gave me. That's great. Because it all came for the KKK and the MLB. And I've got nothing to do with them. So what would happen now? They all get arrested there at the courts, which is serves them right. That's correct. Serves them right, all right, for damaging other people's reputation and destroying other people's reputation. And using other people as well. That's correct. To get ahead. No, it's not funny. <clears throat> funny at all to laugh at <clears throat> make me as a laughing stock because my pdfs well that's the evidence that is going to put you people behind bars that's great for a very long time i don't know 14 years is the maximum under the crime of torture act but it can go that it can triple it can go for a lifetime and that would be justified that's great all right, you all have a nice day, and I'll keep you up to date when I file my restraining order. But I will definitely be dealing with these enemies. For once and for all, the victim is going to look at each and every one of them. I'm going to take a, you know, a mental picture, that's correct, because I will remember you and I will come back for the three-day war, as I promised. Why? Because you deserve the death penalty. You sure do. When they spread their legs, that's correct. When they spread their legs that wide to have sex of each other so that they could control you and dictate to you and harm you, man, that is the most disgusting, desperate, yeah, desperate thing I've ever heard. Right, here's what I'm going to say. If you're able to spread your legs that wide, then I want you to open your mouth as wide as you can when you come to court and I only want to hear the truth and a decent justification as to why you did what you did. And why did you need to do it? That's correct. Right. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you all have a nice day and take care.